you to see you today in the service. Uh, we're glad to have you at Cold Harbor for the live streaming. And I appreciate you tuning in and streaming to us. Maybe call somebody and tell them we're on the air. Or get up and close, get up and get dressed and be here. We'll be here a little while this morning. And we just love to have you. We appreciate you being here today. How many of you watched the TV program last night? shared it with many preachers and even people in the church and uh, I just uh, appreciate what y'all have done. Last night I got a surprise. I just went in the bedroom at 8 o'clock. Barner was on the in the office. I'm going to study a while. And I told Betty, I said, I'm going to go in there and study for a while and I'll come back in here and watch the last program with you. She said, are you going to get undressed? I said, no. I said, not now. I'll do that later. And I, it, I didn't think about it again. I thought it was strange she asked me, but I didn't. And uh, about 10 minutes to 9, my family and my grandkids come in with flowers, Abby and Lauren, and all of them give me a card, and they put sweet words on there, how much a blessing it was. Yeah. And we watched it together, and when it went off, Donnie texted this about this long on the phone, I believe it probably that long on the phone just one after another people called me and missed on misses and I uh, appreciate the years of service Donnie wrote a nice word at the end that uh, he appreciated a good job well done and the last picture he said now I was hoping he'd have it for the screen he, he was already leaving he said he thinks he erased it off his phone but uh, the last picture he said was a stack I like to add people out of, of the prayer request is called in. He still got all the books, you know. And uh, so I was encouraged, really encouraged, and, and uh, I thank the Lord for what He did last night. And uh, I think it was worth celebrating. Amen. And uh, let's be together. Everybody's had some what football game, basketball game. Amen. So I thought it was good. And I was hoping some of y'all show up. I know you're running by because it's just a family. So I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. I've decided that uh, this month I'm going to take the month off from TV. If I get back on, it'll be in May. But uh, one of the stations I was trying to get on said our quality wasn't good enough for his station. Right. And uh, he wanted me to put some things down. It was like they, you know, somebody reading the Bible, following along with me, show another shot of somebody nodding while I'm preaching. And I, I just ain't into all that. I don't have to run with the big boys. I got a feeling that's what they all do, you know? Right. And I'm not going to do that. Amen. I just, it ain't going to be fake. I know the one ministry's got mirrors all over the wall where when you see a shot, it looks like they got more people there than they got, yeah. you know? Uh, kind of like the same in the restaurant. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> and uh, I want you to continue to give your TV offerings in the jug today. But next week, I told them that we start back go back get a TV program, then we'll go back to what we're doing here. But uh, next week, start next week, the building fund go in this jug instead of the TV program. That way we'll stop it on this month and start next month. So you know, we'll do that. So be faithful to give to that. Be faithful with your tithes. We've had people that supported the TV minister with their tithes. I hope that they'll give it to the church because the church needs it. I've had some people that don't even, I don't even know who gives their tithes because I don't look. Unless you tell me, I don't know it. But uh, I've had a couple of people that gives it to me, and uh, they let me know that they're not going to give it to us no more. They don't even go to church here. And so be faithful with your tithes and your offerings, but I ain't looked at you straight. I don't want to go to work. I want to stay with the church. And that's what I'm going to do, direct it all to the church, and the church does pay me, and uh, I've got my social security. It's just enough to pay the bills, you know. And I thank you for it. And so I'm just praying that God's going to make a way when there seems to be no way. And this morning, I've been praying all morning, but I was in the, getting out of the shower, and I could feel the presence of the Lord 
I was drying off. And I said, Lord, if you're pleased with me, if you're pleased with me, let it show up in the service this morning. Yeah. You know, with the people, the attendance, the praise, the worship, everything, the message, everything. And uh, Benny played got some music on, on YouTube, on the TV, and I couldn't hear it. You know, I couldn't hear it. The door shut. And I was just telling the Lord that. I said, you know, if I please, if you please with me, I need a, I need a sign. I need you to help me. And uh, I got my clothes on to open that door, and she had it on in there. And this is the words I heard first when I opened that door. All my life you have been faithful. What kind of sign we need? Amen. All our life, He's been faithful. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, I believe in in, in uh, you know, polices like like the Gideon set out. They ain't on the sacrifice. Don't don't get the dew on it. Now let the dew be on everything but it. And He did that. I believe in Him, but I think we got the Holy Ghost and we got God yes, and we got the anointing. Amen. Amen. Man. And uh, we got Jesus at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Yes. I mean, what more times we need, amen. amen. He said that your wicked and adulterous generation that seek a sign, there won't be no more signs except the preaching of Jonah. It don't mean that Jonah's going to come back to preach. It means the people preaching like Jonah did. Amen. amen. We love you this morning. so good to see you. I'm encouraged in the Lord. And I got a testimony for the first time. In nearly 20 years, I had took no cumulus since Wednesday. Amen. Amen. I can see back in my work. And it's still going back over. And uh, I'm on aspirin and plavix. And August the 2nd, I get to lay the plavix down. Amen. And I am so thankful. The rest of my life will be on a small aspirin. Amen. I thank the Lord for it. Amen. Amen. He has been all my life. All my life you have been so, so
Well, praise the Lord. Don't you love the Lord today? Amen. I love Him. How I many has come too far, come too far to look back like now? Oh, yes. I like Debbie's song. She sang, I started humming in that chorus. I said, get it, you got it. Amen. I like that song. I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to walk in. Amen. I never do more than I've done. I tell them. I've saved me one, and uh, Caleb was able. God gave him that mountain. Amen. So, I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing his chorus with me. Amen.
marching. We're obeying the Lord. She went back there and sang it with Brother Wilson. Amen. And I believe that we got too many rivers. I've crossed the hot burning desert and struggled right there to Jesus. And that uh, choice means everything when you're working for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read the scripture on the board, not the four verses, five verses. I'll leave it to my dad and you, Brother Mike. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, and he said, Amen. I think it's on. Amen. Let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob or Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men. And has prevailed. Amen. Aren't she glad that she could prevail? Amen. I believe you can get your prayer through. Not on, I'm sorry. They were trying to tell me what I want. I thought I'd turn it on. Amen. And let's it went off. Amen. But I appreciate the Lord this morning. I appreciate you. Worship with me as I preach this morning. Don't stop short of your breakthrough. Amen. Don't stop short of your breakthrough. You know. I could have sung it one more time, I went down there, you know. If you had offered it one more time, I would have If I, the Lord had given me one more day, I would have done what he's talking about. Don't stop short of your breakthrough. Father, we love you today. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. We pray that you bless us, encourage us, move by your spirit, and we give you all the praise and all the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Just wake hands, shake hands. Wake hands. What did you do? Shake hands. I started to say wave and come out wait. Amen. Trying to say two words at one time. Uh, my mind goes faster than my mouth can go sometimes. Amen. That's yours. Amen. On the back of your newsletter, read this with me. It's part of my testimony. So listen. If you will, and read it. If you got a newsletter, it's on the back. It's on the board as well. For the past few weeks, I have wrestled with many issues, from my health to the church and to the TV ministry, several other things which are not as important as the ones I mentioned first. I have found them to be important to me, and I found them to be important to God. I have been studying this message all week long, and I feel like I have the Word of God this morning service. Amen. I got this confirmation Thursday when I got home from the hospital after I had my procedure. The procedure report was real good, but it hadn't sunk in that I didn't have to take no more food the rest of my life about Friday. Amen. Amen. The report was good, and for the first time in 18, 19 years, I'm off coon and I have taken uh, to keep my blood thin. Though still greatly troubled, I began to study this sermon. Amen. And as I studied this sermon, I paused to look at my emails. And I saw the one from the TV station I was trying to get our program with. I read through this lengthy message, which basically said our TV quality was not good enough to be on their station. And when we got the quality up, which could cost thousands of dollars, they would consider us. The mail came. The mailman came out on the road. I was in my office. The window was open. The mailman pulled up, and I received a message. I went out there to get it, and I received a message from David Wilkerson written sometime before he died in 2011. This had been mailed several days before before and reached me just as I had read this discouraged email. Anybody believe that? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, he wrote it sometime before 2011, yeah. and they had to mail it three or four days before I sat down and looked at that email. I cried. Amen. You hear me? Oh. Amen. And the 
mailman came, and I went up there to get it. And at the top of the page, it said, Don't lose heart. His answer to your prayer is coming. Amen. 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 I felt like that was a sign from God. Amen. Yes. He'll give them to you if you ain't seeking a sign. He'll give them to you anyway. Amen. Amen. I woke up Friday with some pain I have had for over a year and it didn't go away. But I realized he had given my mind rest. In fact, Sister Chambers had to tell me what God was doing. She said, he's let you have rest in your mind. Amen. 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 There wasn't no toil all in my mind. How I many please didn't give you peace in my Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I said on TV last night, may the love of God, may the, may the love of God, the grace of God, and the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Yes. Amen. And if you got that, you got peace of mind, and the devil can't take it. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I believe that with all of my heart. God bless this message today. This sermon seeks to enlighten Christians as to the difficulty of the battle and overcoming our fleshly desires that would keep us defeated. Somebody say amen. amen. If you believe that, say amen. We're not going to take a picture and put it on TV. They told me to get somebody on there nodding their head while I was preaching it. They was agreeing with me. Somebody taking notes in their Bible. It's not a bunch of faith to me. Amen. Somebody amen. Did. Amen. Jacob's beginning. Jacob was one of the set of twins, and I won't go into the deep part of it. You know how uh, he didn't have kids till he was 40 because he had to work 14 years for the wife God told him he could have. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so that's just a little extra. But being born, he reached out his hand and took hold of his brother's heel with his hand. Uh, there is where Jacob got his name, one who supplants or supplanted. Or who takes another place or a heel grab? Amen. Uh, we get a glimpse of Jacob's nature even before his birth. While Jacob was in his mother's womb, uh, he, uh, him and his brother Esau, there was a struggle within her body. The two children struggled with each other in her womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening? And the Lord said, uh, told her, the sons in your womb will become two rivals. One will be stronger than the other. The descendants of your older son will serve the descendants of your younger son. It's probably not worth mentioning, but I think it is. Uh, I know some of you read Dear Abby all your life, and I, I, I did when I was young. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, maybe when I was in my early 20s, I did a little bit. Uh, but I hadn't in years, and one day the paper was laying down there, and I saw the headline. And uh, it was a woman that had sent her a letter, and she said, uh, I don't understand why my two boys, I got twins, they're 18 years old, and I don't know why they can't get along. One of them fights with the other all the time. They fight over their clothes, they fight over dishes, they fight over everything in the house. Why can't they get along like normal brothers? And Abby had a short letter back to her, and she said, they do like Cain and Abel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And uh, so I believe that that happens. Amen. And, and the brothers can struggle. Amen. And I, I believe that. Amen. That's what she said. Uh, Jacob's nature. Jacob's entire life, he had been a trickster. How many know that? Amen. He played tricks on people, yeah. cheated people out of stuff. Jacob took his brother's birthright and blessing. He took his uncle's sheep. He did these things through shrewd business. Dealings, you know, talking and making shrewd business. Jacob was a man who pressed on till he got what he wanted. Amen. Somebody hear me. Man. I'm talking about before he started serving the Lord. Amen. He never gave up on life. He was ruthless in his nature. He didn't bother him. It didn't bother him. I'm a high treated people. How I many know somebody like that? Amen. You got to get to the top. Don't bother them how to treat other people. Jacob was the ruler of his own heart. Amen. He could do what he wanted to do because he'd done what was in his heart. I mean, you know what the Bible says about that from the heart the mouth speaketh. Amen. Amen. And uh, we get it in our heart before we do it. Amen. That's called premeditated. Amen. Yeah. We do that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but he did all these things. Uh, he never give up as a trickster, and that quality transferred over to him 
when he started seeking God. Somebody say amen. Amen. And our text, Jacob finds himself in a situation that he'd never encountered before. He was left alone. He'd never been alone. He was left alone. He was used to having his wife and kids and servants with him all the time. He's fleeing from Esau, and that is when God shows up, and that changes everything. Jacob had needed to touch God, to get in touch with God for a long time. How many people like that? Did you know people like that? They just need to get in touch yes. with God. Amen. They've been needing that for a long time. Amen. They just get in touch with God. Amen. He puts it off, and he turns everywhere else in order to face his desperation. There are times when you and I and Jacob and all the people of God just need to get along with God. Somebody hear me say Amen. I believe in corporate worship and prayer. Ain't nobody believes that more than me. I think when we uh, the praises go up, the blessings come down. I believe Amen. if you right. praise God, uh, he won't disappoint you of what you're blessed with. Amen. Amen. I love to see hands raised. How many love to see hands raised? Yes, amen. 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 You're not worshiping me. And you're not worshiping my message. Amen. But you got your hand raised worshiping God. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Jesus promised to be with us if there were just two or three gathered in his name. So don't take a crowd. Uh, he would be there. But sometimes nobody but you can get where you need to go with God. He got to do it by himself. Amen. Amen. Moses Amen. went along. Let me give you some examples. Moses went along on the mount to see God's glory. In the New Testament and Old, there'll be when Abraham saw the place where he was to offer up Isaac, he told his servants to wait here while I and the lad go yonder to worship. He knew what he was going to do. He was going to worship the Lord before he did anything. Amen. Amen. And then let God do the rest. I think if we get that happy today, we're carrying a heavy load. We got this back problem. We got this problem. We, we've been on COVID 18, 19 years. Uh, anything that's wrong in your life, amen, you ought to just uh, admit it and kind of put it back in your mind somewhere it's there and just go to seek God. Some of us have been needing to seek God for a long amen. time. Some of us have been needing to get along with God amen. for a long time. Somebody hear me today. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. When Daniel was alone with God, when he got his breakthrough, after he had sought God for 21 days, three full weeks, the Bible said. When Paul saw the light on the Damascus road, the men with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, and seeing no man. But he saw, he saw the light. Amen. Jesus was alone in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed through to God about the crucifixion. How many know that? Amen. Peter was alone in jail when the angel woke him up. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jonah was alone in the fishing belly when he prayed through. Moses was on the backside of the desert when God spoke to him from the fire. Uh, lastly, I want to tell you that John the Revelator, that gave us all the revelation, told us about the end time, told us about what God would do, about the rapture of the church, about the persecution of the tribulation, all these things. He got to the end of it and said, I see Jesus. And he said, I, uh, the heavens open. I see the, the city of God coming down out, out of God, out of heaven for God. Amen. He was a revelator. And lastly, he was left alone. The Bible said he was alone on the Isle of Patmos. On the Lord's day, he got in the spirit. Amen. Somebody needs to get in the spirit. Amen. You want to fake it? Absolutely not. Some of us need to pray when we get in the spirit. Amen. Somebody Amen. here. Amen. 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 Jacob had nowhere to run when he ran to God. He wrestled with God, and there were two outcomes that result, resulted from this wrestling match. The first one is that Jacob is blessed. Somebody hear me. Amen. Is it worth wrestling with God to get blessed? I think it is. Amen. Yes. Amen. He was blessed. When you lean heavily on the arm of God in your desperation, it allows God to bless you. Amen. Somebody yeah. hear me today. Yes, sir. Uh, hold on to God and don't let go. Ultimately, the blessing will come. What did I say? David Wilkinson said, don't lose heart. Amen. Don't lose your heart. Keep going. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second thing that happened as a result of this last man is that Jacob is left with a limb. But hear me. Yes. The odd thing about a wrestling match with God is you may well walk up 
wake up with a limp with the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. I'll stop right there and tell you a story of my pastor, Brother Smith, in Stanley. We were with the Lord in 2001, 76 years old. He's the one I got my license to preach under. He's the one that uh, was a mentor. My daddy was first, but Brother Smith just walked me through the hand of the time in the ministry for two years, and, and then I got ordained. But I can tell you that one day he told a story. He said he worked at the mill in Kannapolis, and he said he was praying for the Holy Ghost. He'd been praying for the Holy Ghost for a long time, he said. And he said, when I... When I come to, he said, I was under one of the pews with my feet touching the wall. And he said, I hit that wall hard with my feet. And he said, I was speaking in tongues. And he said, I got up and said, I thank God for giving me the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 So he walked away. So the next day he walked into the mill. They looked at Canapolis and he said, he made him like that. Said somebody in the crowd said, Holly Cecil, what's the matter with you? He said, I got the Holy Ghost last night. Amen. Amen. You might believe that? I don't yes. Know. Yes. Got the Holy Ghost. Would you take a limp for the Holy Ghost? Would you take a limp for the fire and presence of yes. God in your life? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I would. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't quit. Press into God. Watch how he blesses you. Maybe like Jacob, you'll receive a name change. Amen. People quit calling you by the old name. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jacob was the ruler of his own heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Keep your heart with all diligence, for with, from out of it is the issues of life. Amen. It is easy to think that Jacob's nature is all bad, and it was. We've all got some catching up to do as Jacob did. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, let me list some scriptures that every one of us should know and remember. At least you've heard of it. Numbers 32 and 23 said, be sure your sin will find you out. Galatians 6 and 7 said, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man saw that shall he also read. Amen. Sam, 1 Samuel 15 and 14. It's easy to forget people like Saul's bleeding of the sheep. Or Achan's sin in the camp in Joshua 7. Or Samson's refusal to play around with harlots. Judges 16, 18 to 21. Or David's adultery with the sheep. We kind of forget those stories, don't we? Uh, Jonah being swallowed up by a great fish that Jesus said was a well in the New Testament. Amen. Or Judas is scared to trade Jesus <coughs> in Matthew 26. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ananias and Sapphire lying to the Holy Ghost in church. He got struck down there. Amen. I think we all got some catching up to do. Somebody say amen. 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 Sooner or later the past will catch up with all of us, when it does, a rational match of great proportions will occur in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in you. You give it all to Jesus. Amen. The word had reached Jacob that his brother was on his way to see him. This terrified Jacob because of all the bad things he had done to Esau. Jacob devises uh, a plan to to uh, Appease his brother by giving him a sizable gift as a token of his desire to restore his fellowship. You know what that's called? The old nature still working. That old nature still working. Think he can buy his way. <clears throat> Think he can buy the way into somebody's life. Jacob had reached the end of the road. He finds himself alone, as I said earlier, and the problem piled up on top of him. Amen. You get along like that, and you got a lot going on, and problems are there. They don't just go away right off. Amen. You got to pray through. You got to keep on praying until God turns this thing around. Amen. 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 Uh, this is uh, about this battle to determine who will rule uh, the rest of Jacob's life. 
This was his championship match. Amen. You want to see a wrestling championship match? This is it. We have all wrestled with problems in our life. Sometimes we've lost, sometimes we've won. It ain't all bad. Somebody That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jacob got his blessing. He got his answer. He was reconciled with his brother, but look what else he got. He was changed. He was permanently, permanently handicapped in order that he might permanently rely on God. Somebody hear me today. Amen. 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 I mean, I think things work like that. Amen. We in this life are too encouraged to sue somebody or get the insurance out of it. Ray Whittington said one time, he was in a church, and there was a lady over the side playing the guitar. He said she had her foot propped up in a chair with a cast on. He said God spoke to him and said, you go over and pray for that lady, I'm going to heal her right now. And so the church was going, and the spirit was moving, he started over to him. And he said he got about halfway. And she said, No, 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 brother. Ray. I'm going to get some insurance out of it. <laughs> they said he told her, said, Go ahead with the insurance and all the authorities and everything else will fall into the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody hear me? Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Yes. Amen. Jacob got his blessing, he got his answer, reconciled with God, but he was changed, he was permanently handicapped in order that he might permanently rely on God for the rest of his life. Amen. Hallelujah. Also he got a name and his nature were changed. He was now called Israel instead of Jacob. Israel means he will rule as God. Jacob means he will weasel in the ways of the south. Amen. Jacob become a new man. He became to operate on a different set of principles. Instead of making his own way, Jacob learned to pray his way through life. Amen. Through prayer, he was changed, and his life was changed forever. Somebody say amen. 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 You may remember Wednesday night service. I was about to choke myself to death up here preaching night. Voice was gone. Took a drink of water. Took another drink of water. <laughs> took another drink of water. I said, "Somebody look at me and and say out loud with your mouth that uh, you don't care if I have to take a drink of water between every line." That's right. That water was right there, and I never took another drink. I don't think you look back on the thing and say I might have took one more, but I don't remember taking another. One. Amen. Right. And I preached the rest of it with my voice. Prayer changes. Yes. Yes. Speaking yes. things in existence. The Bible said, call those things that are not as though they were. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I'm calling some things that is right, I, that I need to, in my life. It's right. I need complete healing. Yes. I need a miracle in my life, my Amen. own life. I got doctor's appointments all the way to September, I believe. Amen. And I don't like them. I don't like none of them. I got three this week. Amen. Coming. And I don't like them. I don't like that. So what I got to do is to start speaking that I'm healed. Amen. I'm healed. And I don't like Amen. that in the morning. I believe eventually that will go away. Amen. I'm not come today. He may not go when you want him, but he's long time God. That's, That's right. the end. Amen. Amen. Through prayer, he was changed and his life changed. In closing, it's a little bit lengthy, but I'm starting right here. Champion is one that wins first place or first prize. In competition, don't you want to be first place? Get first place, right? Place prize for God. Don't you want to do that? I do. I want the prize. You say that's not scriptural. Well, Paul said, uh, "Forgetting those things which are behind, and pressing on to the mark for the <coughs> prize, for the prize." Amen. So we're supposed to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Are you willing to pay the price? Jacob had lost a night's sleep and sustained a serious injury. He was physically handicapped for the rest of his life. Wrestling is a personal conflict and individual contact with the enemy. God wasn't his enemy, but Jacob was his own enemy, and God was wrestling with that enemy. Amen. Amen. Be prepared when you put something in God's hand. Release it to God. Amen. Let God have it. 
Amen. Don't don't put it in his hand and take it back. Put it in his hand and take it back. Put it in his hand and leave it there. I'm gonna, I put it in his hand and say, my son, be saved. Amen. I went and died and to him. Amen. I mean, he's got children that's lost three of them right now. All of them except for Yes. Well, how many don't want them to die and go to hell? And you ought to see them saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Come too far to give up now. Come too far to turn around. I got too much at stake. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Jacob went from a disease, deceiver to a believer. Amen. Because he wanted him to become a champion. You can also have this kind of power with God. God is not changed. God don't have no favorites. Sometimes mamas and daddies seem to, but God don't. God don't have no favorites. Amen. He won't do any more for you. He will do for me. Lots of person will do more for me than it is for you. Amen. Amen. Some of you here under the sound of my voice, either in this church or streaming, are wrestling with God about some things at this very point. Right now, you're wrestling over some things in your life. Son, no, 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 no. Yes, Lord. He's all over some of us, Lord. You're wrestling over some things in your life. Right now, right now, hallelujah. Jacob wrestled. He didn't pray. And now I lay me down to sleep and pray. Somebody hear me. He struggled. It took him all night. He lost some sleep. He worked at it because he deemed it vitally important and worth the effort. Sometimes you feel like it's a losing battle. I've been there myself. Sometimes you feel like there ain't no way I'm going to win this. Whether it be with your job, your life, your marriage, your kids, your parents, you don't matter what it is. Sometimes you feel like, sometimes you just feel like that you can't win. You feel like throwing in the towel? I'm telling you tonight, I hadn't done it with a man figure as Jacob did, but I can tell you I believe it tonight. Uh, that uh, it's not easy to wrestle all night. Some of you might be hearing me. It's not easy to wrestle and roll and toll with me in your bed tonight. It's not easy to wrestle with demons or, or yourself till you get where you need to be with God. At any time, Jacob could have said, I give. Hallelujah. I had a nephew that's 60 years old now, but when he was a little boy, I liked to wrestle and play around with them babies, you know. And uh, Brad did it too when he was little. He was playing so hard, but best of one night he broke his arm. Amen. Sometimes it gets a little too rough, you know. But I will never forget I had my nephew Ronald down. And I was holding him down. And I said, Give. He said, No. Held him a little harder. I said, Give, Ron. He said, No. And about the third or fourth time, I said, Give, Ron. He said, No. I said, Why not? He said, Because you'd win. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's what happens when you give. At any time, Jacob could have given. Amen. Amen. But he didn't give. Amen. But he didn't. He couldn't. The stakes were too high, she sang. He really. Needed his answer. I mean, sometimes we pray, and this is the truth, and I'll take it from me to, to you at the back, to you at the sides, on both sides, and in the middle. Sometimes we pray like it don't matter if we get an answer or if we don't get an answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. We do it like we do. Uh, McDonald's and Burger King, if they get it right, all right. If they don't get it right, all right. Amen. We just take what they want us to have. And we seem to do that with life when things are hard. I don't think we pray through like we ought to. I think we need to get along some work that's in the shower or out behind the house and say, God, are you pleased with me? Amen. God, are you pleased with me? Amen. Amen. And I think sometimes we don't seem to care whether that matters or not either. Amen. Hallelujah. God, are you Tell you if you want to get it right, you got to get that right first. Mm -hmm. Somebody hear me? Yes. God, are you pleased with me? I'm about through. You come on back to the music. When you 
you see it through? Will you pray through? Again, I'm reminded of one of Debbie's songs. He said, you got to pray more than you usually pray. Amen. Are you willing to pray just a little more than you usually pray? Well, I, I, I give five minutes to prayer every day before I go to work. Would you give six? Would you give seven? Would you pray a little more than you usually pray? Somebody say amen. Amen. I believe it's important. Remember what the angel said. You struggle with God. Paraphrasing a little bit. You struggle with God and you prevail. Amen. How many and what do we know about prevailing prayer? You know, you know a lot about it if you pray to pray through before we sing sometimes when I pray through. Amen. Amen. All of heaven came down when I pray through. The glory was there when I pray through. The need was met when I pray through. Somebody say amen. 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 The blessing came when I prayed through. Yes, Lord. And that sounds real good, but there's been times when I didn't pray until I prayed through. I mean, I just come to the Lord and cried and whimpered about the battle and went right back out and still had the same old problems in my life. Amen. It don't, it don't work until you pray through. Until you pray, until you pray, until you pray. The Bible said when Jesus was praying in the garden of in Gethsemane, the Bible said, there's a song that states that it says he went a little further. Yeah. Amen. He went a little further. The disciples went so far, but he went a little further. Amen. The disciples were with him for a little while, but he went a little further. How many believe he went a little further than you? You and you and you and you and me. I believe he did. Amen. Stand your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know? about prevailing prayer. You ever had any experience with prevailing prayer? Amen. Did you pray? Did you pray through? Amen. I know something about that. Amen. Well, I've done it, and I haven't done it. Amen. Amen. Sing a song, baby. Oh, sometimes the heart is filled with blue cracks. Sometimes the heart is
that are watching today, not here with us, but they're watching. Good congregation on the stream line. Thank God for it. Be touched, be blessed. Fight the good fight. How long you got to fight? Amen. Got to fight until you get an answer. Be weary, be not weary and well doing. In due season, you'll reap. When am I going to get an answer to that, preacher? In due time. Amen. Come on. In due time. I believe that. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to us today. Can't be back with us tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll also be streamed. Be back Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Yeah. That'll be streamed in the next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Okay. And we've got some birthdays and anniversaries. Destiny Kelvis. Cameron Deason. Sing happy birthday today. Happy birthday to you. to be in your house this morning, Lord God. We felt your presence here this morning, Lord, and we thank you for that. Father, as we go out these doors now, we just ask you once again, Lord, keep your hand above us, Lord. We'll be back tonight seeking your face again, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.